North Texas Congressman Mark Vesey is here to preview the path ahead. He represents District 33, which includes Fort Worth. He joins us this morning. Thanks for being here, Congressman. Good to be with y'all. All right, Congressman, as you know, immigration and border security is the topic of the day. If, for, if, if a bill, if a compromise bill gets to the House on immigration and border security, I know you're hearing some of the details about it. Will you be supportive of it? Uh, I am certain that if we can get a bipartisan deal done, that I'm going to be for it. I've been waiting for this and working towards this, God, since I was a freshman member of Congress back in 2013. And I remember uh, the group that included uh, the former congressman, now the late congressman, Sam Johnson, uh, out of Collin County. He was, a, he was a part of that group that was working on uh, getting a plan together. And we thought we were going to have a deal. And unfortunately, it just all blew up at the end. And of course, uh, when George W. was president, uh, Rush Limbaugh and talk radio, right wing talk radio, killed that deal. And so there's always something. Uh, but uh, I just want to tell Channel 5 viewers out there uh, and everyone that, look, unless you're about the political games that are taking place, you should be calling your member of Congress and telling them to vote for this bill. It will drastically reduce the amount of undocumented crossings that we're seeing daily. Uh, there is no 5,000 person uh, uh, allowable limit uh, that's being let in. Uh, Republican senator from Oklahoma has said that much. And this is going to be a good deal. It's going to be good uh, for uh, for our country. It's going to be good for uh, people that are being worried about being separated from their families. And we need to get this done. Now, now Representative, the bill won't have a, a path to citizenship for, for people who are in this country uh, without authorization. Uh, I know there, there are things about dreamers that you wish it would be in there. So you would support this proposal, even though it wouldn't have those things that you want in it. I have been a strong supporter of a pathway to citizenship. Every, um, every anyone that's ever migrated uh, to this country has had the opportunity uh, eventually to become citizens. And so that's what I want for everyone. Okay. But what I also want is for people to not have the fear and anxiety of being separated from their loved ones. Uh, and when I go around the 33rd Congressional District in Fort Worth and Dallas and Irving, uh, Grand Prairie, what people are telling me is that they can't handle the anxiety anymore. They don't want to be separated. They don't want to be deported. Uh, so they want to continue to make contributions to this country uh, in the areas of oil and gas production, in the areas of uh, agriculture production, hospitality, uh, serving school lunches, no matter what it may happen to be. So that's more uh, important to you than, than, than uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but so that's more important to you and, and you would support the bill, but we're gonna move on yes. to, to the budget, yeah. right? Well, one, one more quick follow-up on, on the border. You know, the Republicans argue that Look, we shouldn't allow anybody in this country if they don't come through the legal process at a port of entry. I mean, just what, do you, what are your thoughts on that idea, that argument? Uh, I think that uh, Republicans are, are, again, just playing games. That is, that, that is an argument that, that, they've, that they've crafted. Uh, but, of course, uh, it's been the business community that they've worked with hand in hand uh, for decades now. Uh, that has benefited from this. Mm -hmm. And 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 now that same community is saying, we want to get something done, but the Republicans would rather keep the chaos at the border so they will have some sort of political narrative to weave. And what they're saying to me just doesn't make any sense at all. And we need to get something passed. And so uh, I would tell them that they need to work with us. Uh, it will be good, not just for Democratic districts, but for Republican districts and blue states and red states, but getting something done is should be what everyone is focused on and not silly talking points like that. And so moving on to the budget negotiations, um, Congress has just been kind of doing continuing resolutions, keeping the status quo. A lot of programs are on hold because of that, right? So there's a program here in, in North Texas that you help uh, become reality, which is kind of discounts for uh, internet providers in people's homes. That's somewhat in limbo. That's one of the many projects in limbo. So on the budget, what do you think is the path forward 
for that program, but really any additional program. Yeah, affordable connectivity program. That's something that I worked very hard on to get into the bipartisan infrastructure plan that's passed. And now we have uh, thousands and thousands of low income residents here in the North Texas area, including in the district that I serve, that have uh, internet and broadband in their homes. It's allowing them to do homework inside of their houses, start a business, many, many things. And we need to keep that going. As of February the 7th, you won't be able to sign up for that program anymore uh, because we haven't appropriated more money. And it's rural uh, districts in this country, red districts that have signed up the most. And so Republicans ought to want to pass a real budget so we can get things like that funded. Also here in the North Texas area, defense. Defense, CRs are terrible for defense. I don't think that most people understand that. And for all of our workers, the 100,000 uh, 100, or so workers that work at the larger contractors and at the subcontractors here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, whenever we are working and, and on a CR, when it comes to defense spending, uh, it just throws everything at the DOD completely out of whack. And it gives Beijing time to catch up with us. The longer we stay in a CR, the more and more that just benefits Beijing. No one is rooting for us to stay on a CR more than Xi and Beijing is doing. Real quick, in, in, in 10 seconds or so, but do you have any hope that we're going to get off the CR and we're going to get an actual full budget or, or no? I, I don't have hope that we're going to get off the CR. I think that uh, the Republicans uh, have shown that they would rather play politics. Most of these reckless, radical Republicans now, their comrades are calling the shots. And I think that Johnson is just a super, super weak speaker. And I don't think that he has the ability uh, to get his team in shape so we can get something passed. Now, of course, if he wanted to, he could stop playing politics and he could say, from here on out, I'm going to work with Democrats in a bipartisan fashion to get something done. They're not going to get rid of a, a, a speaker again. That's not going to happen, particularly in an election year. So he has more leverage than he thinks. He just needs to find the courage. U.S. Representative Mark Vesey, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Great to see you all.